So what we're going to do is look at describing our systems, our systems of equations in block diagram form. Um, we already see that LabVIEW is a is a block uses a block diagram description for uh, data acquisition and for processing signals and so on. So uh, it turns out we're, we're, we can also use the control and simulation module to represent the uh, the continuous dynamics that we use uh, or the continuous time equations that describe some of these models, some of these uh, systems that, that we are studying in this lab and in the dynamic systems courses. So block diagrams are used uh, graphically to represent signal flow uh, and, uh, and, and also to capture functional relationships between signals. Um, you'll see directed lines with arrowheads that indicate the signal and a certain variable. And then there's nodes shown as blocks that represent like the functions, the input-out relationships. There's also functions such as gains and summers, integrators and differentiators, as I'll show you. And so many modern software programs now are beginning to use block diagrams as a convenient way to uh, represent systems and communicate you know, what systems look like uh, in computer-aided analysis tools. Uh, so again, these block diagram program environments have become very popular in computer-aided packages. They allow you to describe systems using graphical form, which makes it easier, as I said, to communicate uh, the system. Uh, uh, they're functional. They're not just schematics. They're, they, they should capture the mathematical form, for example, uh, of your system. And there's also a very rich history that, uh, of block diagrams being used to describe control systems. So we'll, when, we start, when we talk about control systems later in this course, we, we can also use block diagrams to describe, for example, feedback control and other kinds of functions that are used very commonly um, in, um, in, in, in control applications. So just very simply, you know, you have block diagram algebra. You you're now have elements nodes that can deal with signals, so signal A and B, you can add them, subtract them, you can pull a signal value just the way you do in lab, you write off a signal line, and then of course you have either nonlinear blocks, or for example Y here could be a, a nonlinear function of X, it doesn't have to be a linear function, or you could have just a constant where, um, where Y is a function of X, and actually I see that I've got the wrong symbols here, this shows X this, or actually, this is wrong. This should be x is a function of u. Uh, g, g here is just some gain. Or later, we can we'll also see that this g could also be a function of s, like a Laplace operator. So, like if you had a transfer function for a system, you could also represent that in some of these block blocks. Um, it's common to also have block diagram calculus. You can represent integrals. So like u, you could take the integral of u, some signal u, or derivative of u, and typically in a lot of these um, block diagram languages, they it's become customary to use one over s, which is which is the Laplace representation of an integration of a time integration. So when you see one over s, that's actually an integrator, and the s is a differentiator. Keep in mind these are these are um, numerical implementations of these functions. They're not you know, integrals in this form, and also it's not a Laplace operator, it's not just a linear operator. In fact, what's underneath this block is are the, the ability to use uh, the solvers that we just talked about. So you can actually put a signal in here, and this tells you I want to numerically integrate that signal using Euler integration or RK4, right? So this is actually the heart of our simulation in a block descriptive language, as I'll show you shortly. So how do you build a block diagram of system state equations? Well, when you have a complete set of state equations, as I said, you'll learn to, do, to derive. One way is just for each state equation, that's a derivative. You want a 1 over s for each one of those. So if you have a fifth order system, you have five derivatives you want to solve, you're going to have five 1 over s blocks. And you're going to put everything that results in that derivative into that block and then it gives you the result. It's as simple as that. It makes it graphical. I'll show you in a second what that looks like. So what you need to do is form the input to those 1 over s blocks. 
uh, using gains and function blocks and so on and summing blocks to add terms together and then most importantly in those 1 over s blocks you're going to have to specify initial conditions okay um, there's some special cases where you have to be careful with uh, causality and so on but uh, we won't talk about that here that's that's beyond the scope so like this is so this is what it might look like you're going to have all of these because these dx1, dx2 that, that are created using equations. And I'm going to show you how to, an example for the pendulum, how to do this. As that signal is, is created by some functions and uh, some block descriptive language, whatever you want, you now put it into that 1 over s block over here. I'm showing it as an integral. And then you, you basically are solving for x1 graphically illustrated, but it's also shown graphically to you. But underneath all of the numerical integration of those equations is being done simultaneously and then you have all of those solutions so all these lines represent the solutions of all the states right it's a very compact way of representing that a graphical way so here's an example remember that dx dt here's a linear uh, um, first order equation uh, x is the state use the input so if i wanted to write this in the block diagram language. I need to create dx dt. How do I create that? Well, I need 1 over tau, which is just a gain. So this is just a gain block. And I need to multiply it by the sum of two signals. One is a negative of the state itself, and the other one is an input. So I'm making, I'm creating this sum with a sum block. And so you, and you add that in, and you subtract x. But x comes out of that integ integration, right? So, uh, right? So dx dt goes into the integral, gives you x, and then you just wrap that around, subtract it in this block, and then you, you get the sum you need. So this graphical description of the equations is then conveyed to the to your uh, to your program. The program solves it, and and now this signal here, you can send that out to uh, a graphical uh, to, a, to a to a graph to a plot, uh, save it, and so on. Right. So this is how we're going to describe our systems for simulation.